Welcome back to the Wee Willy Wonderful's Elephants videos. The next part of your pattern um, says to start putting the elephant together, but we're going to make the elephant's tail first uh, because then we'll have all the pieces ready to sew together. So we'll start with the tail. You're going to need your crochet hook, wool, stitch marker, needle and a pair of scissors. So let's get started. I'll move these out of the way so you can see what we're doing. So I've made the magic circle, um, mainly because you already know how to do that. So make a magic circle with six double crochet stitches. And then we're going to do six stitches around four rounds. So I'm going to be really naughty here and I'm not going to use a marker. I'm just going to count my stitches. But I really recommend you don't do that yourself because when you're learning, it's far easier to go wrong. So we're just going to do... 12, 12, so we're going to do 24 stitches in total. So I'm just going to count the 24 just for speed. But if you want to pause the video, um, you know, as you're going along. So do your magic circle and the rounds. When you're making something very narrow... The best way to do it is if you keep it flat, it can be a little bit awkward to see your stitches. The best way to do it is to push it out, look with a finger or with the back of your crochet hook. So your magic circle is out and your strand is on the inside and it forms more of a, a tube shape. And that's far easier to see stitches and work with. So I would certainly recommend doing that. That especially applies if you're working with a very small number of stitches because it is much more awkward. It's also better as well to just clip out that central central thread because otherwise it gets in the way. So I've cut it to about a centimetre and then I'm tucking it into the bottom so it's out of our way. Now we'll carry on with the rest. So if you do one double crochet in each stitch, each of the six stitches for four rounds. And so if I go a little bit quick, just pause it while you catch up. Now, this is what hard. If you can see what I'm doing, it's so easy to accidentally go through two stitches. So when you're going into your next stitch, I tend to poke my hook above so it's out the top of the tube. So we're just making sure that we don't accidentally catch. Because if we accidentally catch a stitch opposite... So if we're going into this stitch and you accidentally catch a thread over there, you'll end up with a tube that seems to taper up and get all tangled together. So when you're working into your stitch, make sure that your hook is coming up through the top. So you're kind of working more pointed upwards because otherwise it's so easy so to catch there and crochet those two together, which will close off your stitches and it'll all go wrong. That's why a lot of people do struggle with such a narrow shape so we're just going to make sure it points upward take it slow and steady because this is awkward it's so easy if your tube starts going really thin or really fat it's because you you're accidentally missing a stitch or getting an extra one and it's it's just awkward keep that tube shape so keep pulling it out or pushing your crochet hook in to keep that tube shape it makes it so much easier to see those stitches. So we're doing four rounds and I've said not to use a marker because I'm very clever obviously and I've completely lost count. <laughs> I should take my own advice really but <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just count the rounds to see if they're about right. You can make the tail a little bit shorter or longer if you wanted to but so I've looked, so one, two, three, four. So I think I've done four, maybe even done a bit extra. So I've looked, there's my magic circle. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Might have even had an extra round, but we won't worry too much for the sake of the video. Right, so once you've done your four rounds, um, we're going to slip stitch and fasten off and leave a 20 centimetre tail. The tail is just for sewing on. So I've just cut it off like so. I'm going to do our usual of... Pull in the loop a little bit bigger, put our thread through like so, and pull it to fasten off. So there we are. So there's our tail. Now our next instruction is to thread some yarn. 
um, it's to thread a length of grey yarn, double length, and make a stitch in the end of the centre of the magic tail, uh, sorry, magic circle. Make another loop and pass this needle through the knot. Cut to two centimetres and then re repeat with another thread. And then we're going to split them. So all that means is, is we're going to get a thread. This is probably a little bit longer than required, but we're going to thread it like so. And when it says double length, that just means we're going to do it double. So the lengths are together. So we've got two strands. This is the end that's going to be sewn onto our elephant's bottom. And this is the end that we're going to add some little threads to. So I'm going to sew into the end, pull it through a little bit like that. And then what I'm going to do, not pull it all the way through, I'm going to go like that. And then I'm going to put that through the loops, mainly just to knot it to secure it. Like so, so it's nice and secure, especially if it's for children, you want it really secure so that it's not going to get pulled out by those little, little fingers. So we're going to cut that. That's far too long at the minute, but we won't worry about that yet. We're going to thread our second piece. So exactly the same as you did with the last one. So we're just threading our needle. Pull it through, make sure it's double length. This is how we add a lot of these little straggly bits onto tails. It's the same technique for the uh, giraffe's tail as well. So there we are. So we're going to do the same again. So in the same end, I'm just going to go in here. Now you can do more strands if you want. You can do as many as you want. When I'm going in with the new one, I'm going to grab all the old ones and keep them out of the way, otherwise they'll get tangled. So we're going to go about halfway, do another stitch through and then pop our needle through those two loops and that will just cause a knot at the end to make it a bit more secure again. Then I'm going to cut that off. And then what we're going to do, it says to trim them to about two centimetres. So of course, you can do them as long as you want. But about two centimetres, so let's say about here, like so. And then we're going to use the blunt end, so the end where the hole is of our needle. And we're just going to split those strands. Now what this does is just makes them a little bit curly. And if you split them quite a lot, they'll go fluffy. So it depends what effect you want. And curly effect's nice. It's just it's just splitting them. World's made of several ply, um, which is several just thread strands all wound together. So when we split them, it just gives that nice effect. This is nice effect for hair as well. If you're making a doll or something, or also our little chick on his head. We split the strands there as well and it just gives a lovely little curly effect or if we do it even more if you just keep going it will end up really fluffy oops <laughs> it's not an exact science i just look for ones that haven't been split properly and start from the bottom and work your way up oh i get a bit tangled it's just the way it is There we go. <laughs> Let's have a look, see if they all look fluffy enough. If you want a little bit more tassely bits on the end, just add a few more, just the same as you did with the others. But this works works well, the two doubles, I think. And now what I'm going to do, once you've split them, you will find they may be coming even again. So I'm just going to trim them. You can leave them uneven if you prefer, but I prefer with nice tidy elephant tail. Look at this, so you can see the effect it's had splitting them. I think that's a really nice effect. So there's our elephant tail all ready for sewing up. <laughs> 